Now, with escalating nuclear tensions, I thought this would be a perfect time to talk about tactical nuclear weapons, or battlefield nuclear weapons. So, what are they? Because I've talked before about what you'd normally call strategic nuclear weapons, what everybody thinks of when they think of nuclear weapons, you know, a massive exchange between the superpowers uh, targeting cities and big military bases, which would basically be the, you know, the doomsday scenario uh, that you'd see in movies like the Fr uh, Freds or the Day After. Now, tactical nuclear weapons, um, they're, ki they, they're kind of silly in the, um, the more you think about them, which we'll get onto in the video, but the idea of tactical nuclear weapons was much smaller scale nuclear weapons, which would instead be more like very large conventional explosives, but obviously they are nuclear weapons. And the point of these would be that in a um, war, you could use nuclear weapons against an enemy's military forces, um, but not necessarily targeting bases and things like that. So the idea was that if you knew a lot of soldiers were coming in from a certain area, you could fire a nuclear artillery shell at them, for example, um, which means you could wipe out lots of tanks and infantry, for example, um, at once, rather than, um, you know, so it's like, it's amplifying your regular stuff. So, for example, one of the um, tactical nuclear weapons was called, um, well, the test was called Grable, but it was basically the atomic cannon. Now, you can find the clips from Trinity and Beyond on YouTube. They've actually released those for free on YouTube um, in HD, so I'd recommend watching that if you've not seen it, but... The idea between atomic cannons or atomic artillery was you had basically a conventional artillery gun that could shoot atomic shells. So you actually had a nuclear warhead built into an artillery shell. So instead of, you know, bombarding your enemy troops with regular conventional shells, you would air burst or ground burst a nuclear shell above them. Meaning that, you know, you could have something the size of the Hiroshima bomb, um, a sort of a 15 kiloton odd warhead. Um, detonated above enemy troop formations, so doing far more damage than conventional warheads could do. The idea being that you, you know, gave your regular troops far more force projection. Now, most tactical nuclear weapons were actually a lot smaller than that. Most of them were 10 kT or under. Um, I think a lot of them were actually under 1 kT by quite a big margin. One of the very famous ones is called the Davy Crockett. Now, what the Davy Crockett was, was essentially a recoilless rifle, um, which shot a giant, um, if you've played Fall the Fallout games and you know what the Fat Man is, the Fat Man is obviously inspired by the Davy Crockett. The idea was that you'd have, um, I think it was about 0.2 kT or it might have been 0.02 kT. So very small in terms of nuclear weapons but still very big in terms of conventional explosives. And the idea was that you basically had a man fireable, although you'd have it on a stand because it weighed about 30 kilos, 30 to 40 kilos, the idea is, you know, on a tripod or a bipod, you could have a recallless rifle that would shoot, um, you know, a nuclear warhead um, that could be used against enemy tanks or infantry. Now, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it that there's actually almost like a nuclear RPG, that you could have something, you know, obviously bulkier than an RPG, but still that kind of size um, rocket propelled grenade, you know, anti-tank rifle, sort of big you know, tube, but you are instead shooting a nuclear warhead from it. It's sort of crazy to think about, but it really did exist. Um, now, the Davy Crockett, although it was a very small yield, although, again, still much bigger than you'd get from a conventional recoilless rifle or anything like that, part of the idea of that was a bit similar to um, neutron bombs. It was that you'd blanket an area with radiation and kill a lot of enemy soldiers through radiation exposure. So, not very pleasant, obviously. Now, with things like the nuclear artillery, lots of nations came up with those in various forms. Lots of them also had short-range nuclear missile launchers. The idea being that, you know, you shoot a rocket sort of 20 miles away and it detonates, 30 miles away and it detonates. Um, pretty much everybody had those during the Cold War of various forms. Um, I think the Honest John was the name of the US one that was used by quite a lot of NATO for a while, and the Soviets obviously had similar versions. The idea being that if you knew the enemy was massing troops, you could shoot these at them. So, that's sort of the land-based warfare. Obviously, again, you could obviously have things like strategic nuclear bombs in bombers like B-52s or the B-29s or whatever, and then have them drop a nuclear bomb over troop formations. Um, but this was the idea that you'd actually develop battlefield weapons for, um, you know, engaging enemy soldiers. Now, another thing that was, I don't know if they ever actually invented these, but it was certainly drawn up in concept and it was completely feasible, 
was the idea of nuclear mines. So, like a landmine, but far, far bigger. You'd excavate an area underground, build a bomb as big as you wanted under it, and then cover it up with soil, and then you could detonate it via remote or whatever else. So when enemy troop formations crossed over, say, say you buried a load in the Fulda Gap, if East Germany and the Soviet Union rolled in, you'd wait for them to be roughly over the mine and detonate it, and you've basically got a giant IED that's nuclear. That was one of the ideas that they came up with. The strangest one was the British idea that was to put live chickens surrounding the bomb with food and water, so the body heat from the chickens would actually keep the bomb warm enough to work during the winter. Very, very odd. Now, this also extended to naval warfare. So, naval warfare in terms of tactical nuclear options actually, you know, kept going for a lot longer because it made a lot more sense really in this way, but we'll, again, we'll get onto that in a bit. But um, the idea was that you'd have things like nuclear depth charges, nuclear torpedoes. So, if you want to watch some amazing nuclear footage, watch Operation Crossroads, Abel and Baker. They're the um, two sort of um, US tests that they did in either 45 or 46, where um, they were seeing what would happen to an armada of ships if um, you dropped first. Abel was where they dropped basically a nuke from a B-29 on it to see what would happen. I think it was roughly a 20 KT Fat Man device. Then when that, although that did a lot of damage, um, what they then did was they basically had a device that was a few hundred meters or might not have even been that deep under the water. Um, the same yield device, but this time it launched about a million tons of irradiated salt water up into the air, flipped ships end over end, um, and sank loads more ships. So what they obviously found out was that you could wipe out an entire enemy's naval force, um, you know, like a flotilla or whatever, um, or an armada, um, using basically a single nuclear warhead. And bear in mind, these were just 20 kT odd size ones, like the very early nuclear weapons. If you then went up to, you know, hydrogen bombs of several megaton yields, you could easily wipe out far more than that. Um, they didn't do the third test, but they later did do it, sort of 10 or 20 years later, and it was called Operation Wigwam. And Operation Wigwam was when they had a very deep depth charge, which they uh, detonated to see what would happen to submarines. No surprise, the submarines were completely crushed by the force of it. So, the idea was that you could now wipe out enemy navies using nuclear weapons. And, similar to having the nuclear sort of artillery on land, they'd also develop some battleships that had the cannons capable of firing these nuclear artillery shells. So, you know, in a conventional exchange between ships shooting their cannons at each other, one ship could be a bit more overpowered and be shooting nuclear shells from its cannons. So, what was the problem with all of this? Well, escalation. Um, obviously, eventually everybody realised that it was a bad idea that you were probably giving frontline troops nuclear weapons that, you know, you could escalate into a hot war very quickly if a minor skirmish ended up with nuclear weapons being exchanged, even if they were small yield nuclear weapons. Now, again, there's meant to be a chain of command kind of thing where soldiers would have to get authorization to use these weapons, but unless they require special activation codes or anything like that, if enemy troops are overwhelming you and you've got your Davy Crockett nuclear launcher next to you, you're probably going to shoot it before you get crushed by the tanks. So, this is why they were basically abandoned, because obviously the risk of escalating from a small scale conflict into a thermonuclear, you know, annihilation was very real if, you know, one minute you had soldiers exchanging nuclear weapons over a border skirmish and the next um, cities and everything were being um, wiped out. And if you've watched Freds, uh, you might actually remember that the reason the nuclear war kicks off in Freds is because um, there's an exchange in, I think it's Iran, between, um, or it's definitely in the Middle East, where um, the uh, nuclear, I think it's, airstrike is used against um, USB 52s, I think it is, the Soviet shoot-up um, nuclear-tipped missiles against the B-52s um, to shoot them down, and the Americans also use B-52s and nuclear warheads to target Soviet bases. So that's what escalates it, you know, into a full-on war. And in the beginning of Fred's as well, they say that it starts off with military bases and airfields being targeted, and then that quickly escalates into cities being targeted, as it would do if um, everybody starts launching their nukes at each other like there's no tomorrow. So anyway, that's um, a bit of an overview on tactical nuclear weapons for you, things like the Davy Crockett and nuclear cannons, or, you know, nuclear artillery. Very fascinating stuff. Um, obviously, thankfully, de-escalation was chosen, but now 
you know, with India and Pakistan, there's a bit of um, tension there coming up. Um, both of those have nuclear weapons. This is where you might see, you know, a flashpoint where if people lower down have access in the chain of command to um, nuclear weapons and there's a skirmish going on, they might think it's in, you know, the strategic interest of the particular battle we're fighting or tactical interest of the battle we're fighting to use a nuclear weapon now and wipe out lots of enemy troops. Obviously the problem is then that escalates everything because then the enemy, whoever you're fighting, is going to say, right, now we need to use our nuclear weapons again in response. And that's when it escalates quickly into both sides throwing everything they've got at each other and obliterating each other. So anyway, hopefully you found this video interesting. And um, let's hope, obviously, that this stuff really doesn't escalate to the point where nuclear weapons may be used against, um, you know, anybody really.